Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a box restoration on a number two Muir Hill site dumper. Uh, when I came across this box, I actually purchased it with a, a standard code one model, um, and it is the first uh, model of this type that I've been able to get an original box with. Uh, so I was really excited when I came across it. Um, this box is not in great shape. But it is a Series B, which is one of the older boxes for this model. And so I felt like it was worth, you know, a little attention to see if I could salvage it. Um, you can see on the front, there's a pretty nasty tear that runs almost all the way across. It has a, uh, a previous attempt to fix it with some, uh, some bad sellotape. The back side here is uh, really pretty good. Uh, I've got a couple small puncture holes, probably from a staple at some point, but um, obviously the uh, the end flaps are missing on one side. The good news is that when I got this model, um, I could see that there was at least one of the end flaps uh, available, and when the seller actually shipped it to me, um, I think I have all of the pieces that I need to do a restoration on this box. So let's get to it. The initial evaluation of this box uh, shows that obviously my biggest area that I'm going to have to do some work on is here on the front. You can see there's a it looks like a grease stain or something up here. I'm probably not going to be able to do much with that. Um, you can see on the inside there's the uh, previous cello tape repair and then I've got a little corner that's coming up so I think I should be able to get underneath that to get it removed this side got a couple little puncture marks here from a staple another grease spot and there's a little tear up on top here and I, th I think I may try to see what I can do to fix that um, the rest of it I just got a couple little areas that are peeling up those are pretty easy to touch down with a little bit of glue um, when I got this box, uh, as you can see, it came with kind of the uh, kit of parts, right? It's a little bit like a, uh, a puzzle piece. Um, and I've got two uh, inner flaps and the end flap, and then a random mix of just smaller uh, little torn pieces of cardboard um, that have flaked off either in shipping or... Um, previously, but I think I can figure out where all of these go and try to put to this little puzzle back together. Um, and I think to begin, um, the first thing I'm going to do is remove that sellotape repair. In order to do that repair, I'm going to do uh, the method you've seen before on the channel, and that is I'm going to use a little bit of lighter fluid. Um, applying that just to the end of a, uh, a q-tip um, and I'm going to start in that corner where it was kind of peeling up um, the nice thing about the lighter fluid is it sort of dissolves the adhesive uh, from the sellotape and um, once that adhesive uh, goes mushy it's actually pretty straightforward just to uh, peel it back the key with this is really just patience um, I want to work it a little bit, pull. If I start to see any fibers coming off as I'm pulling the tape, um, I know that my adhesive has not completely dissolved in there yet. And so um, that's where it just takes kind of a watchful eye and a lot of patience. Um, and, you know, I'll go in and I'll apply a little bit more of the fluid right down there in the joint and make sure that I get all that adhesive dissolved before I tug any more. Um, on the tape but this appears like it's coming loose I don't think that this repair was made that long ago a lot of times when I get the tape it's all dried and cracked and that adhesive is really stuck and uh, I think this is a more recent repair uh, maybe even by the seller that I bought it from so as you can see I've got a really good saturation on there and uh, with a little patience in the right timing. I'm trying to pull from the back because there's this little flap inside that's coming down. And there we go. So that actually came out really nice. Um, the other advantage to using the lighter fluid uh, is that it evaporates. So all this uh, kind of staining you see on the surface of the box 
As soon as that evaporates, that will all disappear. In order to repair the face of this box, uh, one of the challenges always is trying to get all these different layers of torn flaps either ab above or below the area where they're supposed to be. Um, that cardboard, when it tears, it, it tends to kind of fragment into little pieces. And so before I stick anything down, I want to kind of use a little bit of the flexibility I've got here while it's just torn to position each one of those pieces kind of brings some of that print layer back together and when I get that nice and set and I'm happy with where it's at um, then I'm going to use some mending tissue on the back side um, I really it's important to me on this one I don't want any of my repairs to be visible from the outside of the box so I'm going to try to keep all of the uh, mending tissue on the inside so to start, I've cut a pretty good piece of uh, mending tissue. This is a, an acid-free um, product. It's meant specifically for uh, sensitive document repairs and uh, archival quality um, preservation work. And it works really great. Um, this was a suggestion from one of my viewers and i uh, really glad that he uh, turned me on to this stuff. Um, it is really super sticky, and if you peel it too far off the backing paper, I found that it tends to stick to itself. And so I like to peel off just a little bit to uh, kind of get it started. And um, in this case, you know, I'm kind of trying to work up inside of the box, and so I, I tend to find that kind of doing that by touch and feel works the best. So I'm just putting this right against my finger so I can feel kind of about how far back it is and position that first little piece in there um, just by touch and then uh, once I've got that kind of where I wanted it I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping all those layers lined up um, I'm gonna pull that right out to the edge of the box where I can trim it off um, it's gonna take a couple strips across here uh, to give good backing to all those little flaps so I'll trim this off and I'll add in the second piece. Once the mending tissue is in place, uh, the adhesive on it is actually activated through just a little pressure and some friction with a burnishing tool. Um, I use a really nice bone burnishing tool that I ordered off of Amazon. Um, I've got the link for all of the stuff that I use uh, down in my description. Um, but now that I've got that mending tissue behind all these layers, you can see I've got just enough support and kind of holding everything tight and in place that I can start some of these repairs on the surface. Um, you can see I've got a couple of these little flaps where the artwork is torn, uh, where the surface of the cardboard is coming up on here, and then the piece that's missing from the corner as well. In order to make that repair, I'm going to use some uh, acid-free adhesive. Um, I like this Lineco um, neutral pH stuff and uh, it, it's a big bottle and it really I can use it very sparingly. Um, in order to apply it I like to use just a simple um, toothpick and I'll get a little bit of adhesive down on just the point of that toothpick and that does two things. One, it lets me get inside of some of these really, really tight little flaps, these little spaces in here, and uh, it helps me lift those up and work that adhesive all the way back into the back. Um, it also helps me kind of control how much I get on, because it's it's very easy to, uh, to put too much glue on, and uh, then as I kind of press down each one of those little flaps, I get a whole bunch of extra glue that splooges out and I've got to um, get all of that removed uh, pretty pretty quickly um, or else I'm also risking um, compromising the artwork. So, so you can see I want to get enough adhesive 
back down in there to really make sure that these little torn flaps stick well. Uh, but I don't want to get too much to where I end up having to remove a whole bunch or damaging the area around the box. As soon as I get all these stuck down, um, then I'm going to do the same exact method to try to reattach the uh, missing piece up at the top corner and a couple of these other um, smaller areas that are all torn uh, or have these little flaps that are coming up. So as you can see here, I'm just using the other side of the toothpick, um, the, the clean end, to just kind of roll over and uh, peel up all that extra glue. And I'm actually really happy with that result. So on to the rest of it. So I've got a whole bunch of different pieces here. Um, I've got two, looks like inner flaps. This one's got an almost tear, a pretty heavy crease across it um, that I'm gonna try to use the same method, um, just a little bit of mending tissue to reinforce the back side of it. Um, and this stuff is, is really, really great. It's uh, fairly simple to work with, it works not unlike sellotape, um, the difference is that the, the burnishing tool activates the adhesive on this. And uh, this is, because it's our copper quality, it is removable. So if at some point in the future any of my boxes ever became extremely valuable and uh, the repair was uh, taking away from that value, all of this would be reversible. Um, I'm really not that concerned with any of this. Uh, it's an easy product for me to work with and it accomplishes what I want. And so that's why I use it. But uh, as you can see, I've cut a piece that's larger than I need because um, I know I can always come in with my little mini shears here and I can trim right up on the edge of the box. Um, and this type of a repair, uh, when I'm done, really is nearly invisible. Um, you know, I know it's there, I'm looking for it, I can see it, but um, to the average person that would look at this box, uh, that's you know something that they're going to come off, uh, come across you know really secondarily. Um, the end flap is really probably the the toughest one of these um, because it's missing this little corner. And so I'm going to continue with this method of uh, using the glue to uh, stick down any of my little torn areas and the mending tissue to repair all of the uh, the tears or the, the pieces that have actually come loose and come off. Um, and so we're gonna tackle this end flap.
With our end flap completely repaired, now all that is left is to reattach it to the box. Now, I always like to do a dry fit on these just to kind of make sure that, you know, this is all fitting the right way and this is how it's going to line up. And this actually looks pretty decent. Um, in order to make this repair, and again, try to stay as invisible as possible, um, I'm going to use just a little piece of the mending tissue on the inside of the box. Now, I've read a couple different methods, um, actually on some of the archival forums, for the best way to do this, and uh, some of them actually recommend running two strips across the joint to act as uh, a hinge, and then another piece running across those, uh, so you end up with two layers of uh, the mending tissue. But, um, you know, my interest in this is really not to create a, an operable hinge that's going to be um, opening and closing a lot. It's really just to reattach this piece, and so I'm just going to apply one piece of the mending tissue lengthwise along where that joint would be. Um, and you can see, I'm not real worried about it hanging over. I want to make sure it gets good and adhered to this piece of the box. Now, before I put it in, I want to use my little mini shears and just trim off some of this extra off of each end to make sure that that's a nice, clean fit inside of the box. And that's going to do it for the end flap. Um, so you can see the inside, the repair is almost invisible. The outside, you don't see any bit of the mending tissue at all. I do have a couple of these little areas of the box. This cardboard's just kind of flaking up. And uh, I think I can fix that. I'm going to use just another little dab of the uh, pH neutral adhesive down in there. All I'm trying to do is get all those little fingers of cardboard that are flaking up just to stick down where they belong. So on the, I'll call it the good side of the box, there was really just one issue, and that was this torn flap up here near the top. Um, it's a pretty, pretty big tear. It actually goes pretty far back down the box. Um, I didn't notice that until really I started working the glue down in um, but you know it's pretty easy to repair I'll put a little bit of our adhesive down in there and just roll it out flat um, and work it out I want to make sure that there's nothing squirting out the edge um, and that I don't even think you'll see that repair when we're done the last step that I have is to reattach these uh, inner flaps um, I've got two inner flaps with this and uh, again, this is kind of a bit of a puzzle, but I think this piece goes right here. The colors and everything seem to match up. Um, and I'm going to do this repair the same as the others, just with a little mending tissue.
Now this last flap, uh, it looks a little off to me. Um, if I try to line it up with the edge of the box, it's obviously too big. Um, and if I went the other way, the blue would be meeting the yellow. So I know it goes in this orientation, but I don't believe that this flap actually belongs to this box. Um, I think when whoever I purchased this from uh, sent it to me, they were trying to figure out, you know, do I have all the pieces? And I'm guessing that this probably belongs to a different box. Um, when I compare it to the other flaps, you can see it's definitely uh, too long. And, you know, this is what I've got. It looks like it's the right age. Um, and the color striping, everything else lines up. It's just too big. So I just cut off the end of that flap, which means that there's somebody else out there that got a box that's going to have a, an inner flap that's too small. But you can see now it's the same size as the other flap. And uh, I think it's going to work just fine uh, when I'm finished. Nobody will ever know that this uh, inner flap probably didn't come from this box. So that's going to complete our box restoration on the number two uh, Moco Lesney Muir Hill Site Dumper. Uh, the only thing really left to do in this case is to go ahead and fold up the uh, end flaps of our box. I do still want to be really careful with these because we've only got the repair just on the inside. Um, again, as old and as valuable as this box is, I just didn't want the repairs to be visible. I can see I got a little little end flap, a little piece that's peeling back there right on the end. I'm going to stick a uh, small dab of glue on that. I know I'm, I'm probably being anal retentive with this, but you know, the rest of the box looks so good now. I don't want to skip by even just one of these small things. And this is going to be inside. It's never going to be seen, but uh, it's also really easy for me to fix here real quick. So, get that rolled back. Perfect. So, nobody's ever even going to know that that was uh, damaged. And the tiny little amount of glue I got, I'm okay with uh, closing this up. It'll dry. So, this was uh, the other end. This is the piece that was completely missing. And it's now back intact in its original shape. And I am really happy with that. So just a reminder where we started out, um, this box was uh, really, really rough. Had uh, definitely seen some better days, but you know, this is something that's almost 70 years old uh, at this point. And so, you know, I felt like, uh, especially since I had all the original pieces, this was worth restoring. And here's where we are today. Um, you know, I'm really pleased with how this came out. Uh, I know not everybody gets as excited about the boxes as I do, but when you get a really nice mint model, uh, the thing that just really sets it off uh, and, and really makes it more valuable is if you have the original box. And you know this is a great original box. I'm really excited that I was able to put all the pieces of this little puzzle back together and restore it to its former glory. So I hope you uh, enjoy this video. As always, if you did, click that like button, uh, 
would love to hear your comments below. Tell me what I did right, what I did wrong, and what you want to see coming up on the channel. And as always, click that subscribe link so you can keep up with all of our future videos. Thanks so much for joining me this week on Vintage Diecast Restoration.